Hello and welcome to Field Notes. People have noticed that the Earth shakes intermittently for just about as long as humans have been around. And people have been pretty obsessed figuring out how to detect it and predict it. And so today we are going to be talking about detecting earthquakes. One important thing to note is that the actual machine that does the detecting is called the seismograph. While the readout and what we typically see as the wave pattern is called a seismogram. And if you're anything like me, you're going to continuously forget that and have to look it up every time. But the detection of earthquakes didn't start there. One of the first instruments used to detect earthquakes was under the Han Dynasty in 132 AD by an inventor named Chang Hang. The Chinese believed, as did many people, that earthquakes were signs of a divine's displeasure. So it became very important for the ruling body to be aware of any earthquakes that were happening in the kingdom. This need spurred the invention of the first seismograph. If you have watched the History Channel for any length of time, you have probably seen this device. The dragons on the outside of the barrel were oriented in basic compass direction. In the mouths of these dragons were small bronze balls. The idea was that when an earthquake occurred, the dragon would open its mouth and drop the ball into the toad below. This would make a noise and alert the people around it that an earthquake was possibly occurring. This device, commonly called a dragon jar, would also show in which direction the earthquake happened. Since the dragons were oriented in basic compass directions, the ball would be released from the dragon in the opposite direction of the earthquake's origin. The citizens were pretty skeptical of this technology. Until 138 AD, when a dragon dropped a ball indicating an earthquake in the direction of the capital city of Luyang. When no one heard anything from the capital city, the dragon jar's accuracy was called into question. However, a few days later, a message was received that the region west of the capital had indeed experienced an earthquake. People were pretty stoked. And people didn't stop there. In 1855, Luigi Palmieri attempted to record earthquakes using a bowl of mercury. When the mercury spilled out of the bowl and into a container, it would stop a clock, indicating the time, and start recording ground motion. And in the late 1800s, we start to see the beginnings of the first seismograph, which was then improved upon by British researchers, including a man named John Milne, who began the use of a pendulum system. Today, the seismograph still uses the pendulum, but the device is grounded in bedrock with the pendulum at the very top of the box. This pendulum, which is a bar or a spring, has a hinge at one end and a weight at the other. The overall idea is that the weight will not move when the bedrock moves due to an earthquake, because momentum. While most of the actual recording of waves is now done electronically, historically there would be a drum of paper at the bottom of the unit and a pen attached to the bottom of the weight, and that would physically draw the waves as it happens. A seismograph will determine that an earthquake has happened, and through studying a seismogram you can determine how far away. However, it does not show location. Using data from three different seismographs, you can determine the location through a technique called triangulation. Now, none of this data actually really means anything until you're able to translate it, and that's where scales come in, and that is what we will be talking about next time. So if you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below and I will see you all next time with another video. Bye! Hello and welcome to Game Time King. I'm Jessica and we are playing Nancy Drew, which I used to play a lot as a child. It's just a little point and click mystery. You gotta figure out what's going on. You're off to have a good adventure and instead you get roped into solving everybody else's problems.